Hello everyone, welcome to SmartMe Tutorials. In today's video, we will be discussing how to use environment variables in Spring Boot application properties. Engineers have different preferences when it, when it comes to setting up their local machine. Some will go with default and others will customize. I typically run my local Postgres instance on the default port 5432 and I have a certain Username and password combination that I use. My colleagues, on the other hand, they also have their own preferred setup and their own preferred username and password combination. But since we all contribute to the same code base, it can be a challenge for running the application on our local machine without modifying the application properties. And if we keep modifying the application properties to suit our own local environment every time we have to update the code base, it can become a mess. And even it can lead to a scenario where an engineer forgets to revert back the changes. Therefore, local values making it into um, production or even UAT environment, which can be bad. Right. So how do we do this? So the way to do this is to use environment variables to provide an override. Let's see how we can do that in IntelliJ. This is um, a repo for one of my previous tutorial about using Flyway migration tool in Spring Boot. It has been configured to expect the database username root and the database password password. If I were to run this on my local machine as is, without any modification, it would not work. Why? I don't have a database username root on my own local Postgres server. To solve this, I am going to update the root definition to include an environment variable. JDBC data source username, colon root. What I've done here is to instruct Spring Boot that while starting up, use the value of an environment variable named JDBC underscore data source underscore username. And if you can't find that environment variable, then fall back to root. I will do the same for the password. JDBC underscore data source underscore password. Take note of the full colon, which is what we use to separate the environment variable from the fallback value. Now, the next thing I need to do is to update my run configuration so that the application, the environment variables will be provided to the application at startup. To do this in Spring Boot, I will go to the run configurations. I will click on edit configurations. I will click on the modify options here and I will enable the environment variables. Now that I've seen the environment variables, I will click on this icon here to add, right? So I can click on the plus to add the environment variable that I've defined in the application properties. This is JDBC underscore data source underscore username. Now I have the opportunity of providing the actual value that I have on my own local machine. I will do the same for the password, JDBC underscore data source underscore password. And then I will also use demo for that. Then I will click on OK, and I will apply the changes, okay? Now, if I run the application again, it will work because it will be using the value from the environment variables as opposed to the one that is configured by default. So as you can see here, the application has started successfully, right? Um, and it's, it's working well. We can do this same, uh, use this same technique for every property configurations, right? So what this means is that if we are, when we are setting up the application, as long as we have externalized the a value like this, anybody that is, any other team members that is pulling the code base do not need to 
um, modify the application properties to make the application run on their machine. They simply need to provide the environment variables, right? So you can also do this um, in other um, in other IDEs. We will soon see how we can do it in VS Code, um, but I'm sure there is a way to also provide environment variables to um, run configurations in Eclipse um, and even STS. Now, what if I do not provide a default value, as is this case? If I do not provide a default value, that means the environment variable becomes a must. That is, if the environment variable is not defined, the application will not start. I'll go ahead and edit the configuration. Um, temporarily, I will remove the username environment variable by clicking on this remove icon. I will save, apply, okay, right. So I will run the application again and I expect the application to fail start up. Why? Because the value, this environment variable does not exist, right? So to prevent that, that's why we need to provide a fallback. It's always good practice to provide a fallback. So I will undo the changes, provide the fallback, edit the configuration again, and add the actual value that I expect. Then we have demo, click on OK, apply, OK. Right. When I run the application again, we should be good, as you can see here, right? So the importance of providing a fallback is that it makes the environment variable optional. So if I were to have a user, a database user on my Postgres machine locally, with username root and password password, then I don't need to modify um, the wrong configuration at all. Let's go and see how we can do this same um, um, technique if we are in uh, VS Code, Visual Studio Code ID. So in Visual Studio Code, uh, we are going to open the folder. Right. We've opened the application. Then what we are going to do, um, we can see that the environment variable definition are still valid, still there. So what we will do is to create a, if I just run this um, as is, that is, if I just if I go back, open the this and run run this as is, um, we will see that the application will not start, right? Because it's still using the default username, default database username root, which does not exist. So what I will do is I will create um, launch.json file, right? Once I've done that. Then I will look for the specific, this because this is a multimodal project, so we have quite a number of um, um, application, you know, um, um, run configurations. Huh? I will look for the specific one, which is for the Spring Boot Flyway application. Uh, Spring Boot Flyway, this one, right. And then on, under the run configuration, I will add environment, you know, entry. So in this entry, I'm going to define the JDBC data source underscore username, right? Just like we did in IntelliJ, I provide the value demo, I provide JDBC underscore data source underscore password, provide the value demo as well, and then I will save. So once I save and I come back to run configuration and I select this specific Spring Boot Flyway application because that's what we want to um, execute and I run it, we we'll notice that the application is able to start successfully, right? Um, so that's how to use environment variables to override, um, uh, to override the default values in Spring Boot properties. And this way, we don't have to keep modifying or even create a special application, iPhone local properties and adding it to Git ignore files 
and all of those acts. This is the proper way to do it and it works. Thank you everyone uh, for watching and for listening. Please like, subscribe and do share this with your friends. Until next time, thank you.